Most people don't see their workplace as a place to have fun. But it doesn't have to be that way anymore. At Sonatify, you will find a balance between work and fun. A place where you can fall in love with its culture. Sonatify is a big family and uh, getting to see the smiling faces, we all take care of each other, uh, we all help each other to do the best that we can do. That means a lot and uh, I love being part of the Sonatify technology family. What I love about working in Sonatify is definitely the people, the sense of family. And we're just family. Where your job becomes a great and thriving experience that will let you achieve things you thought impossible. So I found this article from entrepreneur.com about how to become a CEO. I started reading it and it's probably one of the most laughable pieces of advice you've ever seen. But as I looked further into the CEO who wrote the article about how to become a CEO, everything started to make sense. In short, the CEO who wrote this is the CEO of an offshoring agency that takes employees from Latin America and contracts them to U.S. businesses for cheaper. However, their entire shtick is that they aren't offshore. They're nearshore, which is basically the same thing except in your time zone or closer to it by the way his company also has all of your classic corporate cringe marks they have a culture page you tell me if it's a perk or a giant red flag no video fridays we work hard enough throughout the week don't we since most if not all of our sonatify technology team members have five to six on camera meetings every single day we thought it would only be fair to have one day per week where the camera stays off we are proud to introduce no video fridays Look, man, I don't think that's a perk. Now, we'll come back to all this stuff and their YouTube page, which I haven't shown you yet. But first, everyone has dreams of being a CEO. So what is the difference between a mid-level employee and a CEO? Chances are, it is the traits they possess. That's it. It's, it's the traits. Or could it be the pay difference? Maybe the power difference? The part where the CEO can fire other people, but the mid-level employee can't? No, it's just the traits. It's, it's just the character difference between us, that's all. Most people would like the number one trait to be experience and education because these two factors are within their control. It is satisfying to believe that if you work hard as much as necessary and continue to improve your skills, you will rise to the top. But that is not always how it works. Wow, that's probably the most honest part of this entire article. So tell me, how does it work? They are passionate, that's right. The first trait on this list is passion, which is in short supply as we enter what the New York Times has coined the age of anti-ambition. People either do not want to work anymore or they do not want to put any extra work into their daily work. That's rich coming from a CEO. So first off, great job leaning into the boomer stereotype of people don't want to work anymore without thinking about maybe why that is. Are you compensating them for that extra daily work or are you trying to pay them in culture? Because I've seen your culture page and it looks like a bunch of cheap startup perks that some HR company said, use these to keep your employees engaged instead of paying them more. Welcome to Sonatify Technology where we know culture. Do you? Because the first thing you list is being a family. Oh, you say equality, no hierarchy. We believe in an open door policy at Sonatify Technology, which means any individual can book a meeting with any other individual. We are all equal. I don't think that equality means having an open door policy. Just because you can book a meeting with anyone at the company does not mean you are all equal. Sonatify cash prizes where you can win some gift cards. They have technology guilds, which is where you can talk to other people at work. They have Sonatify awards where you can get a useless plaque. They have Sonatify swag. Congratulations. You can be a walking advertisement for your company now. Sonatify game days where you too can waste time with your coworkers while you're not actually working. They have Sonatify networking. What I want you to do is take a close look at this Zoom call where I assume they're having their networking event. And you can see right here, there's this person. And in the bottom right corner, there's the same person. So homie is overemployed at the same company. <laughs> Fitness challenges, you can do that without Sonatify involved. Then they have their two Slack channels where you can talk about what movies and music you like to listen to at work. So that's perks, I guess. Then they have Sonatify Nexus, which is a rapidly growing social group created to share advice, experience, and helpful tips. What it really is, is just a LinkedIn page for their employees. Extended education as a proud member of the Sonatify technology family. It's so cringe. Your education and professional skills are as important to us as they are to you. So I'm going to guess they probably offer you like one free Udemy course a year or something as long as it's on sale. <laughs> Just kidding. Everything on Udemy is always on sale. And then I already showed you they have no video Fridays. They still have five to six calls, but they're just listening to you instead of watching you. Why are they having that many meetings per day? And why are you forcing them to keep their video on for every single meeting? It just screams mismanagement 
management and micromanagement. Editor Josh here, I'm trying to be a bit more fair in my videos. Although it's not listed on the Our Culture page, if you come over to their careers page, they do have profit sharing available. This is the only thing about your culture that speaks to me. The rest of this is meh, we'll see about it. Add this to your culture page. But anyways, let's jump back to the article for a second because it continues and says, passion makes it easy to stand out if you're enthusiastic about your work. Honestly, what they'll probably do when they see your passion and enthusiasm is just give you more work. Don't fall into the trap of, well, they just didn't notice me this time, so I'll keep doing more, because that's how you get stuck in an endless loop where you're just this close to getting that promotion and you have been for 10 years. And even if they do notice you, that doesn't pay the bills. There has to be something that comes from that. Employees who are enthusiastic and care about the work they do, as well as the company's vision, will naturally be passionate about everything they do while at work. This is how you can tell the CEO is out of touch, because sure, maybe there are some workers out there that truly believe in what their company is doing, and the leadership, and they truly want to contribute, and they just love every minute of every day. But I'd say the majority of workers don't, and their job is not their passion, it's simply income. Of course, these workers will tell management that it's their passion, just like anyone else to get the job, but let's be real here. This passion has fueled some of the biggest tech companies and some of the most innovative discoveries of the last century. Passion from employees has made a lot of executives a lot of money. That's how I read that. Passion is also necessary because it is the number one difference between an employee who gives up when the task gets too hard and the employee who finds an innovative way to fix a problem. No, passion is not the number one difference. Incentives are. An employee who is properly incentivized and trusts their management to follow through on those incentives are the ones who keep going. Now let's move on to number two. They are eager. Isn't that the same thing as being passionate? But okay, yeah. Everyone knows the job no one wants and the task people actively avoid by shifting their eyes or conveniently missing a critical meeting. Wait, hold on. People miss critical meetings to avoid doing a task at work? What company are these people working at where they aren't immediately questioned and employees shifting their eyes in a meeting means they don't want to do it because it's too hard? Maybe they're upset that they're in a meeting instead of working. I mean, you have five to six video meetings a day. The company notices the employee who actively volunteers for that position. Well, yeah, if they're actively saying, I will do this, then sure, they're gonna get noticed, but that doesn't mean rewarded or promoted. Therefore, instead of moving your gaze, it may be a good idea to jump in head first when a difficult or tedious task comes up in a meeting. Now I'm all for a challenge. I'd say if you think you can learn something from it or are just genuinely interested in it, then give that difficult task a shot, but don't do it with expectations of anything, despite anything management says to you. The person who volunteers for challenging assignments starts to build a reputation as a willing team member and someone willing to problem solve. Or probably more accurately, you build the reputation as the person that can easily be taken advantage of. If you can solve a problem at the lower level, you can solve more significant problems down the road, which is precisely what the employer will start thinking. This is a pretty big claim. Uh, they might also think, hey, this person does all the hard stuff willingly and never asks for anything for it. And then when they finally do say something, we can just be like, oh, sorry, not in the budget right now, but we noticed you. Maybe they'll even mention you in a company-wide email about how you came through for the company. Therefore, always opt for the more challenging task if there is a choice between a simple one and a hard one. That mentality and work ethic will not go unnoticed. But so what? What does being noticed mean? Potential opportunity? Uh, well, that's where it usually hangs out, in the limbo of potential and never actually coming to fruition. Let's look at the third and final tip here. They don't find problems they solve problems. Are you ready to step out behind the desk and into the boardroom? Your attitude has more to do with the transition than anything else judging by this list. Yeah, because you made the list. It's like saying we investigated ourselves and found no wrongdoing. So after reading this article and looking at their culture page, I also found out that they have a YouTube channel. And a lot of these are just short little one minute videos where they give corporate definitions to things. They even have a video that talks about nearshoring, which again is what this company does. Nearshore outsourcing is a business model that hires team members from nearby countries. That means that if your company operates in a country like the USA, you'll hire nearshore qualified team members from a neighboring country like Mexico. This approach allows a company to find experienced software developers at a lower price and thus maximize profits while minimizing costs. If you want to outsource or offshore, that's fine. It's just hilarious that you try to rebrand it by calling it Nearshore. Can you just imagine being an employee that's tasked with making a video defining how the CEO makes a bunch of money off of you? Here's me making a video about how my boss maximizes profits while minimizing costs. That's what this is. It's pretty sad, to be honest. Also, the music they play is something that would be played when an investigator exposes something, like a, like a CoffeeZilla video. Because there are minimal time zone differences and shorter travel distance. But instead, they're just exposing themselves. Such a weird choice. Now the LinkedIn page for the CEO is just the it's like a whole meme dude. His whole page is basically him screenshotting his Twitter posts 
and then pasting them into LinkedIn as an image and then putting agree. Here's one. Agree. 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 Do you agree? I noticed in between all of his agree posts that he also got an award for something. It's this one right here, the Globy Awards. Now, I tried to figure out what it is, but I still have no idea. This is the YouTube video for the award show, and it's like watching Michael Scott from The Office. Yeah, lots of teams involved, so I want to give big thanks to every single one of them. Thank you very much for uh, having this award. Thank you. Today was a great day. We won the... We are really honored to be... We, we are so proud of this uh, recognition. Uh, In this recognition today. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Just, this is a team effort and I just want to... Thank you very much. So here's a poll from the CEO of Sonatify, and they're currently asking, which benefit of nearshore outsourcing do you find the most valuable? Same time zone, high English proficiency, mentality and mindset executive. Where's the where's the save money button? I don't... Steve, what's going on? Where's my save money button, huh? Now, you might be wondering what's on the rest of their YouTube channel. Well, I looked around, and it was mostly Sonata Defined, where they explain those basic concepts, like nearshoring or whatever to their own employees but i also found a react video where it looks like they watched one mr beast reacts video and attempted to copy it now if you look at the title it says what the episode one crazy videos sonatify reacts and there's only one episode as a content creator i know what that means <laughs> So out of respect i tried to give this video the benefit of the doubt and give it a watch and honestly it's rough the clips aren't funny and the reactions are basically non-existent. What's up, Sonatify team? It's your boys. Another Oh car my boat. gosh. The Titanic. Wow. Um, oh, fun fact here about the CEO. I scrolled down to their experience and it shows that they're currently CEO here, a network contributor to Entrepreneur Media, and then official member of Forbes Technology Council. And then he's also an official member of the Alliance of Chief Executives. I wonder what the passionate level is when you get the Alliance of Chief Executives all in one place. Their eagerness is probably just off the charts. So here is their The Sonatify Family page. That's right, they have an entire page dedicated to talking about themselves as family. It's just gross, like, come on, this is gone now, Steve. Take this away. We're not doing the family meme in 2023 anymore, stop. Let's take a look at their glass door page since they brag about it on their profile. The only reason they have such an impossible and unbelievably high rating is that they force their employees to add good reviews. No culture whatsoever, even though they think that they have one. No interest in their employees at all. You are just a number for them. They have several working lawsuits because they exploit their employees and don't pay them what they should. Interesting. So I guess the CEO personally responded to this person. Damage control mode activated. As CEO, I wanted to respond to this view directly. Unfortunately, this individual did not meet our standards during their probation period and was let go. Regarding our culture, company culture and values are the very foundation of Sonatify Technologies. We work tremendously hard to consistently provide a high level of appreciation for our team members. We do so through company awards and quarterly ceremonies, birthday Zoom celebrations. Please review our page dedicated to helping elaborate each of our efforts to improve company culture. Wait, then you link to company culture? Are you serious? You're going to link to this page. You're going to think someone's going to read this and not run away as fast as possible. Let us also mention that we have multiple Sonatify culture ambassadors. Yes, that is their official title who work full time to support this specific effort. Well, they're not doing a very good job. We take all feedback, positive and negative, very seriously. And I'm always available to talk directly with anyone interested in joining our Sonatify family. You're not a family, Steve. Also, I'd just like to note that they make no mention of the several working lawsuits against them. Them, nor the accusation of forcing employees to add good reviews. Now, just some icing on the cake here for you. I did say that Steve Taplin is one of the network contributors to entrepreneur.com, and he has another article titled, This is what it takes to be a top tech CEO today. Please tell me more, Steve. Anyways, guys, Steve Taplin, Sonatify, three tips to become a CEO. Just be passionate, guys, and you'll rise up through the ranks. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button, click the subscribe button, leave a comment. Let me know what you want me to roast next, if anything, or maybe you have a good company, good examples. Send it to me. You can email me, Discord, Instagram, however you want to do it. Having said all that, I hope you are doing well, and I'll see you in the next one.